Hello, and welcome to Just a Gearhead. So first thing we're going to do today is uh, probably get the seatbelts mounted into the car. And then I'm also going to show you some, I was, like I mentioned before, I was chasing some electrical issues, gremlins in the car. So I might show you some of that as well before we get on to today's project. One of the wiring issues and gremlins I was chasing was that when these two headlights, or any of the headlights were on, um, Normally you're supposed to have a running light and a signal light. Well in this case nothing would happen. It would work fine without the headlights on. I'd have a signal light. As soon as I turn on the headlights, I'd lose everything here. Now that usually means you have a bad ground. On these older cars, these sockets are actually ground through the housing. And they don't actually have a separate wire. And I couldn't get this socket out to clean it, the back of it, um, without wrecking it because it was press fit into here. So I actually had to crush it, pull it out through the back, get rid of it, and then I went out and got a new socket at Canadian Tire that was similar but needed a little modification, but it had three wires, one for the signal, one for the running light, and a, gra a separate ground wire. So then I epoxied it in here and then added on a length of wire. So as you can see, it's a little dark down there. But there's the connectors, and then this little wire here is its own ground. So now that has its own dedicated ground. As soon as I did that, signal light works fine with the headlights on, I get the running light and everything. So then I did the other side as well. It actually, oh, here it is. Yeah, you can see this is where I added it on back in here. I added on this extension, and it actually grounds out on this side here on this side. Yeah. So that fixed the signal light issue. So yeah, if you ever have an issue where your signal light stops working when your headlights come on, it probably is your ground. One of the other electrical gremlins I've been chasing was the hazards. Uh, the hazards weren't working. Now I thought it was just the little flasher relay, but I changed that and it wasn't. So then I was fiddling with the wires above it that connect to it, and as I was moving them around, it would come on and come on, turn off. So I figured it was a bad connection somewhere. So I traced it back to um, here we go. this connector from the steering column harness that goes to the main harness. So I was wiggling this and it would come on, turn off, come on, turn off. But while I was doing that, I was noticing that this was heating up. It was getting quite hot. So I decided to just cut it off. I was going to try to find a new 10 pin connector, but uh, anywhere that sells them is either not open or I have to order off the internet. So just in the temporary, I went through wire by wire and just connected each wire individually. And then for some reason, this wire, if it was connected, the flashers wouldn't work, the hazards wouldn't work. But if I just disconnected it, the, has the hazards worked. So I'm just gonna, I just taped it up and left it for now. I'm not sure what's going on there. But yeah, um, the stereo doesn't work. I still haven't figured out um, the heater and the fans yet because I don't think they are currently working. But my headlights work, signal lights work, tail lights work, backup lights work, um, all the signals, the hazards all work now. And I need all those things to pass inspection. And I have windshield wipers and sprayers that work. So now on to the next thing. It's a little while later. I've been working on getting some shoulder seat belts, seat belts in general installed. So I went back to pick and pull and pulled out a couple of seat belts out of uh, another car. Um, I couldn't take the ones out of the Saturn for, well I broke a couple of Torx bits trying to get them out and then um, I noticed afterwards that they were mounted to the ceiling so they wouldn't work for this project anyways because of the uh, motion lock that's in these, the momentum locks. You need to mount them pretty much in their original position. So in these ones case, they were upright in the car. They were actually upright on the B pillar. But I'm going to mount them here because there's like a double layer of metal here. There's a nice, actually maybe a triple layer of metal right here. So I drilled a hole through that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to mount this here. So this was on the seatbelt. So I cut a little notch in it so I could get it off. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to mount it up here. Because it looks like there was a seatbelt of some sort mounted there at one point. Um, the reason I had to cut it is um, it was kind of facing the wrong way. If I didn't cut it off and slide it off, if I put it on here, there would have been a twist in the seatbelt here, like right through here. So I didn't want that. 
and I didn't really want to twist out here either because they're kind of uncomfortable. So I just cut a little slot. Might not be the best thing in the world, but on some cars this thing is just made of plastic and whatnot anyway, so I think the mount, this mount here is going to be the important part and probably the one down here. So yeah, these will bolt in up here. Seat belt ratchet reel or whatever you want to call it will mount there. And this will mount to the factory spot down here. Just, yeah. The only thing I had to do is swap them left to right. So I'm going to install those and then we'll uh, move on to our next project today. So there, all installed. Yeah. Looks like it should by the looks of it. And yeah, nice and sturdy. This is in the factory mount from the, for the original seat belts. So is this one up here. This is also a factory mount of some sort. So, and there, yeah, there's a nut on the back side of this. Just, and like I said, there's like at least three layers of metal there. So that's pretty strong to hold it to. The only other thing I had to do with this was shave these down on the sides because they were almost the same as the ones for the Saturn. I just had to make them a little bit narrower and they fit perfectly. So yeah. All right. Now the only problem is, so I got to take them right back out because <laughs> uh, we still don't have carpet and stuff in here. And oh, when I make this back panel. I'll probably make something to go over top of this and hide this a bit. Alright, so this is our next project. This is Kilmat Sound Editing. Now, I don't really know anything about this company. I found it on um, Amazon. It was like 50 square feet of it for I think like $90 Canadian. So I ordered it and we're going to give it a try. Um, it's probably better than nothing anyways. Um, I had this roller kicking around for doing uh, laminate stuff and uh, veneering, so I'm just going to use that roller, not to need to buy a separate one for it. found with some of these areas we have lots of curve 
like this. It's best to start one end where you kind of want it, overlapping just a little bit, and then use your hand to push it in. It will get wrinkles, but there's nothing you can really do about that. And then just smooth it out. Then take your roller afterwards and press it in. With this specific product, they gave you these little rectangles all over it. And they say that once you get them kind of squished down, that means it's stuck. Uh, some places squish better than others. <laughs> and it really just kind of stretches out when you get a little curve in the floor. It kind of stretches and fills into those fairly well. I don't know how well the camera is picking that up, but they are flattening out a bit. So, I'll keep going. That box that I bought for about $90 Canadian had 50 square feet of mat in it, of this sound editing stuff. So, it covered the entire floor, um, including into the cubby hole. And I also did this back uh, wall area, or divider area. Um, I did just let it kind of overlap in the middle here. I didn't cut it specifically to length. Um, so I probably wasted a little bit there. And I just kind of threw one or two little pieces over top of this that I had left over top of the seat bracket. If I had been a little bit more uh, careful, like I made measurements and cut specifically, I might have had a little bit more left over. But I don't think it would even have been enough to do the uh, roof of the car, like I was thinking. But I might get some more before I do the roof of the car or before I get the headliner and whatnot. Anyways, so that is sound editing. So that'll be, I guess, uh, seatbelts and sound editing for this video. Um, I guess I'll just call it there. Um, next video, I think we'll go into re the seats or the carpet or something. Uh, thanks for watching. Please comment, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. I appreciate it. Uh, if you guys want t-shirts and merchandise, please check out the link to my Redbubble page in the description. For you who have already commented, liked, subscribed, and all that, and pop merchandise, I thank you very much. It's uh, quite appreciated. Anyways, I'll see you guys next time.